Okay, so <clears throat> now I want to um, talk about this consistency condition for um, all finite difference methods. So a requirement for all finite difference methods and I'm going to show this as FTM or FTA. FTA means finite difference approximations. So when the spacing of points becomes arbitrarily small, the truncation error, and I'm going to show it with TE from now on, truncation error must approach zero. And let's see what it is what it means. In mathematical representation it means the limit of delta x goes to zero of the truncation error for all uh, finite difference approximation should go to zero and become zero. And this is called as consistency condition. Important uh, condition for all finite difference methods, okay? So, Any FTA, any finite difference approximation, any finite difference approximation for which this limit holds, that means the limit of delta x goes to zero of truncation error also goes to zero or uh, becomes zero is called consistent so any any final difference approximation which this uh, condition holds for that is called consistent and there is another point that I want to make and that is the rate at which the truncation error goes to zero as delta x goes to zero is called and I'm going to show it with this it's called the order of the approximation okay so this is what we call the order like the rate at which this t truncation error goes to zero as delta x goes to zero okay so let me just give you an example So example, for example, forward and backward differences 
are first order or O delta X, the order of delta X, while central difference in equal spacing is second order. Okay, so let's look at the uh, um, backward and forward difference. For example, for uh, backward difference, for forward difference, you see the order is delta xi, right? So this is the largest one, uh, the largest term as delta x goes to zero because the other terms are going to be what? For example, the other terms are going to be uh, delta xi square something plus delta xi uh, cube something, right? So these are the other terms. And as delta x goes to zero, these become extremely small, extremely tiny, uh, compared to what? Compared to delta x, right? So the delta x i uh, is gonna be um, the um, dominant term. So uh, this is what we call the order of this approximation. So this uh, approximation, the order of that is delta x i. Okay, the same thing for backward difference, the order is going to be delta xi, and if they are equal, um, grad xi is going to be delta xi, or delta x, uh, to, be, to make it better. And central difference, if they have equal spacing, uh, we are going to get a second order delta x square, or their delta x square, similarly. Okay, so this is very important when I when I talk about the order of any approximation, any uh, um, uh, numerical uh, method or numerical approximation. I'm talking about this, the rate at which uh, this truncation error goes to zero, right? Uh, this one, the rate at which the truncation error goes to zero. So this is what I mean by the order of any approximation. So it's can, it can be order delta x, so it can be order delta x square, and uh, so on and so forth. Okay. So now I want to, now that you have all these basics, um, I want to uh, give a general example of a, um, um, a general way of solving a kind of um, um, finite difference approximation, okay? So in general, what are the steps that we are going to take? So this is a simple example for that. So the question asks, approximate the following one d steady advection diffusion equation using finite difference method okay so the question we have the uh one the steady advection diffusion equation is v du dx minus d d square u over dx square equals to zero for x between 0 and L, and with the boundary condition of u, zero is, u at 0 is 1, and u at L is 0. Okay, so this is the question. So now let's see the answer. Okay, uh, so I want to discretize this equation first, so I'm going to show it in this uh, border. 
This is a one dimensional uh, problem. So this is going to be x. Uh, and it is from x equals to 0 to x equal to L. So I'm going to put here L. OK. And I'm going to say this is a 0. And so I want to discretize it to n. OK, so I'm going to say x1 is going to be 0 and xn is going to be L. And then I have other points here, for example, x2, x3, etc. up to, uh, for example, here I have xi, here I have xi minus 1, and here I have xi plus 1. And this goes on and on. And here, I, I want to have an equal distance for all of them. So I have a delta x for all of these discretized uh, um, form. OK, so now I want to write the approximation. So I, I'm going to write v du over dx minus d, d square u over dx square can be approximated as I'm going to use a uh, central difference method. So I'm going to say V for U, I'm going to write UI. So first based on this point, for example, I'm going to write V UI plus one minus UI minus one over two delta X. And this is from the uh, central difference method that we learned last time from this one. Okay. So it's going to be 2 delta x. Then this is going to be uh, minus d. For the second derivative, I'm going to also use a uh, uh, central difference method. So I am going to have ui plus 1 minus 2ui plus ui minus 1 over delta x square. This equals to 0. Right? Based on the equation that we had, this is going to be 0. So... Um, this is based on the second derivative, which is here, right? I'm using this formula. Okay. So now uh, I'm going to multiply this by uh, delta x square over d and what i'm going to get is v delta x over 2d ui plus 1 minus ui minus 1 and the second one is going to be just ui plus 1 plus 2 ui minus ui minus 1 equals to 0, right? So this is what I'm going to get. So, uh, now I want to um, rearrange these terms a little bit. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the first term I'm going to just for write uh, factor ui minus 1. So I'm going to get minus v delta x over 2d minus 1 from here. And I factor ui minus 1 plus 
Then the second term is going to be this one. So I'm going to have 2ui. And then the third term is going to be for ui plus 1. So I'm going to have v delta x over 2d minus 1. ui plus 1 equals to 0. Okay. So this is the approximation that I have. And then I want to write this coefficient because this is constant as alpha 1, this one as alpha 2, and this one as alpha 3. Okay. And see what how I'm going to rearrange these terms because these are uh, for all these um, points, right, for all of these, I have this. And so for i equals to 1, I can write this as this way. For i equals to 1, u1 is going to be what? Is going to be um, u, at x, uh, u at 0, which is going to be 1, right, from the boundary condition. So u1 is just 1. For i equals to 2, I can use this equation, right, that I have. So I can write it as alpha 1 u1 plus alpha 2 u2 plus alpha 3 u3 equals to 0. For i equals to 3, I can use the same equation again. I'm going to write it as alpha 1 u2 now plus alpha 2 u3 plus alpha 3 u4 equals to 0. Okay. So this goes on and on until I get to i equals to n. So for i equals to n, I'm going to get uh, u at xn, which is u at l, which is 0 from here. Right, from the boundary condition. So I'm going to have un is 0. Okay. So you see, this approximation leads to a set of uh, algebraic equations, right? So these are algebraic equations, a set of algebraic equations. And I can solve this by a matrix equation. Solve the matrix equation. Okay. I can convert this to a matrix and then solve these algebraic equations. So let's see how that will be done if we, I want to convert this to a matrix. So let me do it here. Okay, so if we convert this into a matrix, it's going to look like something like this. So I'm going to have uh, the first term is going to be u1, then u2, u3. This goes on and on until un. Okay. So the first one is going to be, the first equation is u1 equals to 1. So I'm going to write it as 1, and then, which is going to be multiplied by u1, and then the other terms are just 0 equals to 1 on the right-hand side. 
So the second equation, if I want to write it, is going to be <clears throat> alpha 1, u1, alpha 2, u2, alpha 3, u3, and then the other terms are just 0, equals to 0. The third equation is the first term is 0, then I have alpha 1, uh, alpha 2, alpha 3, and then the rest, the other terms are 0. And this list goes on and on until uh, un minus 1. So un minus 1 is going to be the, the uh, last term is going to be alpha 3, alpha 2, and alpha 1. And then the rest are going to be 0, right? So this equals to 0. And the, the other terms... So the other terms are going to be, the last equation is un equals to 0. So it's going to be 0. And all of these are also 0. And 1 equals to 0. Right? So this is the form of these uh, matrix. And if you, if you see, if you notice, this is like... Uh, a diagonal matrix, right? Okay, so this looks like a diagonal matrix. So we have converted this um, um, set of algebraic equation to this matrix, and this is a simple try diagonal structure right so this is how we can convert uh, these uh, partial differential equation the continuous partial differential equation into a finite um, number of equations algebraic set of equations and then convert it to kind of discretize it and convert it to this uh, kind of matrix form where you can easily solve this in computer, okay? And we, we're going to come back to uh, some methods for uh, solving these kind of, um, uh, kind of matrices, okay? Matrices. So this was the uh, kind of uh, general approximation or general... Uh, way of solving these um, these uh, uh, these partial differential equations using um, using uh, these uh, algebraic equations and uh, these matrix form. Okay, so let me just have a brief review of what we learned today. So we started with the Taylor's theorem, which is a theorem where we used to kind of approximate a function uh, at the vicinity of a known value of some uh, of that function. So we are going to solve. We are. We want to find the the value of the function at the vicinity of this x star where we know all the value of the x star and all is the, the, the derivative values at this x star point, okay? And um, as I said, this is an exact uh, series. This is an exact solution for this ux with this uh, residual, right? So the residual is also given. The order of the residual is also depends on how much, uh, how further you go into that series, okay? So then we solve a simple example of Taylor series for sine function, just for your uh, refreshing your mind. And then uh, we use this uh, Taylor series to find the truncation errors of finite difference approximations, okay? So we wrote this down, the Taylor series of uxi plus one and uxi minus one. And then we found that for a forward approximation, this is going to be the forward approximation, and this is going to be the truncation error of that. And the leading term, the leading order term here is delta x, delta xi. 
uh, which, in which if you have equality distance, delta x i is going to be just delta x. So the order of approximation of a forward, uh, forward difference is forward difference approximation is delta x. Similarly, we did that for a backward approximation, and also I showed the truncation error of a uh, central difference approximation. And then we talked about uh, consistency condition. The consistency condition uh, says that uh, this is a for consistent uh, approximations, the uh, limit of Taylor uh, the truncation error as delta x goes to zero for any approximation, any consistent approximation should go to zero. So as delta x goes to zero, the Taylor uh, the truncation error has to go also to zero, and we have to get a exact solution of that uh, partial differential equation that we are solving numerically. Okay, and this is called consistency uh, consistency condition. And then we define the rate of uh, the order of approximation as the rate at which uh, the truncation error goes to zero as delta x goes to zero. Okay. And then uh, finally, I just gave you a simple general example of how you can use these uh, finite difference approximations to actually at attack and approach a uh, uh, kind of uh, a partial differential equation. So this was the uh, 1D steady advection diffusion equation, which we solved it using a finite difference method. So first we discretize our domain based on this because this is just a one dimensional domain. And then we wrote these, um, we discretize these equations with center, center difference scheme. And I just uh, rearranged the terms and rearranged the terms and then found these uh, constants, coefficients, and then rewrote the, all the equations that we have to solve in order to be able to close this system and solve this equation uh, numerically, right? So before, in the previous sections, we all uh, focused on solving this equation analytically, and this is like the numerical way of solving that. So these are all the equations that we have to solve in order to be able to solve this equation numerically. And um, this is a set of algebraic equations. And an interesting thing is we now can convert this set of algebraic equation into a matrix form and easily give this to a computer and solve this, uh, solve this in a matrix form, okay? So uh, when we convert that into this uh, matrix form, this is a central difference scheme. We are going to get this simple tridiagonal structure here. And uh, this is going to be our uh, right-hand side which uh, is going to be based on the boundary conditions or if we have any source term or the sink term, we are going to put this in the, on the right-hand side of uh, this equation. Okay, so this was just kind of the um, uh, introduction again to the uh, finite difference and uh, from next section, uh, next lecture, we are going to uh, delve more into the details of these uh, finite difference approximations and some other details of uh, solving these uh, PDEs using finite difference uh, scheme. Thank you very much.